the friends of architecture, the colleagues, uh, the students. Um, um, I'm really happy to see you in our new home, and um, I welcome you to the first lecture of the seventh session of our lecture series, which is organized by Faculty of Architecture of Estonian Architecture of Arts, and it's supported by Cultural Endowment of Estonia. Um, as I said, it's, it's already seventh season to organize open lecture series where architects, urbanists, both practicing as well as academics introduce their work and fields of research to the audience in Italy. Sila Pilak and Johan Bari curate this year's lecture series. And here I would like to thank uh, Siinduksan, who um, curated open lecture series with Silla Vithak uh, last three years. And I would like to thank them all for fantastic work with big applause. That's very <laughs> And before we start uh, our first lecture, which is really new event, here in new auditorium, in our new home, in our new school. Everything is new in September. Um, I would uh, like to introduce our <coughs> new book, um, which is edited by uh, Veronica Wall. Uh, Veronica actually began uh, uh, to organize the lecture series six years ago. And um, just before the hot summer, uh, she finished the second book called Snoop. And it contains uh, many interviews with uh, our guest lecturers. And um, I would like to thank especially Veronica and also all authors who did the interviews with our uh, guests, again with me, applause. A small advertisement as well, it's available in the library. Um, Snood is a combination of two materials, mud and snow. Uh, it is very typical climatic atmosphere which usually welcomes our guest lectures who are coming to Tallinn. <laughs> so there is mud, the first one, and the snow, the second one. So uh, luckily, not today we have this snot, um, and uh, I think it's more similar to autumn, which we could have in Spain. <laughs> I hope it's almost same. So it's my pleasure to introduce our first lecturer, Enrique Sobejano. Enrique Sobejano has uh, worked as an architect since graduating from the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid and the Graduate School of Architecture and Planning at Columbia University in New York in 1983. He's a professor at the Universität der Kunste Berlin, where he holds the Chair of Principles of Design. He has been a visiting critic and lecturer at various international universities worldwide. From 1986 to 1991, he was co director of the architecture journal Arquitectura, published by the Collegio Official de Arquitectos de Madrid. <laughs> <coughs> In 1985 and has office, offices in Madrid and as well in Berlin. Along with being widely published in the national magazines and books, the firm's work has been exhibited in Biennale di Venezia in 2000, 2002, 6 and 12, at the Museum of Modern Art, Mumbai, New York, 2006, and Kunsthaus in Graz in 2008 and at the Most Foundation in Bologna in 2014. The Architecture Broad received the prestigious Alvarado Medal 
and became a honorary member of American Institute of Architects in 2015. Their, uh, their museum received the European Museum of the Year about 2012, and the Contemporary Art Center Cordoba was shortlisted for this year's Mies van der Rohe Award, which is the prestigious award in the architecture world. Um, their office portfolio is impressive, I have to say that, honestly. But for us, of course, the most important building is our art center. Please join me in welcoming Enrique Sohan. Thank you very much, Andres. Andres is a name that I, I know very well how to pronounce because in Spanish it's exactly the same, Andres. <laughs> Thank you very much for this very nice, very kind introduction. Thank you, Sile, for the invitation. Uh, I'm really happy to to be the first one in this, I'm the first one in this, <laughs> which is um, a, you know, a challenge. Eh? Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm also very happy also because um, even though I have been already lecturing in Estonia one or two times, I think once at least, uh, I'm quite uh, happy to come here every time. You were saying that in autumn in Spain, the summer, every time I come here, it's almost summer. They, my friends from the Arab parts in the know it. <laughs> I know for what reason. Most of the times <laughs> that I come here, it's really a nice, a nice weather, and, and this helps also. Yeah. So I don't know about your name, uh, the name of the book, which is Matt and something, but I haven't seen that much Matt. <laughs> anyway, I would like to talk today about, of course, the Arab Art Center at the end, uh, but before I would like to show you some of our projects that are linked to uh, culture, but culture is a very broad theme. Of course, culture affects many questions, but I will talk about architecture that is done for cultural purposes in any case connected to uh, exhibitions, to cultural centers, to auditorium buildings, which is, by the way, a great part of the work we have been developing in the last years in Spain, in the office in Spain, in the office in Berlin. It is uh, so also because it's a consequence of the way we work. Most of the cases, not to say 90% of our work, is a consequence of competitions. And it's interesting because it's not only interesting because the way we get a project or not. It is interesting because it is becoming a way of constantly developing ideas that do not relate exactly to our place, but rather to places, cultures, programs, uh, and other factors that uh, are influencing our world and therefore making us constantly uh, think over what we're doing. And this was the case, of course, when we were invited to the competition of our part and for the first time we were confronted with Estonia and beautiful landscape and the work of our part. But I'm going to show you some uh, different projects in, in the process uh, that you've seen here. They are in Spain, they are in Germany, they are in Austria, and they are in Estonia, as you can imagine. Uh, more than only talking about these different buildings that I'm going to do, I'm interested also in transmitting that in parallel there is also the inner world uh, that belongs to us as architects, as persons, as experience, as memories, uh, and that constantly uh, are interfering with the actual facts that we confront as architects. And these are uh, these ideas that trigger the projects. I ideas that in many cases are also images. I like very much a German word, which is tempted, uh, and, and it was used very much by uh, Benjamin, images that become uh, thought. And this is what I'd like to show you today when explaining how these different projects were conceived and developed and built in most of the cases. I will start with a project that for us uh, was quite important for many reasons. It is this museum in Medina Zara, Medina del Zara, in the, in the city, in the outskirts of the city of Cordoba in Spain. Now that at the end I'm going to finish with an impressive landscape in La Olasma here in your country, I'd like to also to start with this other landscape, which is uh, a quite different one in, in the very south of Europe, uh, not in the very north of Europe as we are, in, in this area that is uh, connected deeply to the history of Spain of the Middle Ages, in this case when Spain, most of the peninsula, uh, was in, in, in power uh, of these um, Islamic kings of, of coming from, from 
from the Arab of the world. Yeah. So there is this impressive city called Medina Zara <coughs> that was built in the year 940 and only 70 years later, in the year 1010, almost exactly 1000 years ago, it was uh, completely destroyed uh, by the enemies of, of his king, uh, Abel Rahman III. So during centuries, this was forgotten. It became a legend. Nobody knew about this city called Medina Zara. And in the 100 years ago, in the late uh, beginning of the 20th century, the, the archaeologists discovered the place, and for 100 years they have been uh, finding the, the impressive, beautiful city that was uh, quite a statement in the times uh, of the moment where Cordoba was supposed to be, uh, in the early Middle Ages, uh, one of the most, if not the most important city in Europe at the time. So in this amazing place, we won the competition to do the new museum. The new museum was one with a direct idea that is also the metaphor of how we should work there, which is that we should work like archaeologists. Uh, in other words, finding the new museum below Earth, uh, like the archaeologists are finding uh, the, the ruins of the In other words, I'm talking about the building which is beneath the Earth uh, that appears only as a roof uh, in the level of the, of the floor. That was built in a long process, uh, which is long for us because it was 10 years for the archaeologists. I thought that was nothing. <laughs> they said, well, there's nothing. We are only 100 years, and only at 15% of the, of, the, of the city has been recovered. The building appears also in the landscape as a sort of intervention um, that is connected to the archaeological landscape, but also to the say, agricultural land, uh, landscape of southern Spain, of Andalusia. For us, these images of when we went to the site supervision, which is the image below, and, and uh, we constantly had uh, the connection to the work that the archaeologists are doing and were doing at the same time. They were digging and finding, like they are, these winds of the city. We were symbolically and metaphorically digging and finding the building, which is also in the world. In other words, the building is a sequence of patios, uh, uh, courtyards that you see here in this yellow color, or, or orange color, uh, that are really the sort of protagonist of the space. Each of these courtyards has a special character and organizes this complex space that has to do with exhibition, museum, uh, but also with uh, working areas for the archaeologists, storage for the archives of the archaeologists, library, uh, uh, cafeteria, etc., etc. So the building, when you see it from once built from the outset, almost disappears, and that was the whole idea. Uh, the building appears only at certain height with, with these white walls of white concrete. The inside, nevertheless, becomes uh, exhibition spaces and, and, and spaces of the, of the foundation uh, that comes even two floors with the ground, as you see here, for example, in the, in the museum area that we also design and that has some of the most uh, important pieces of this city that is constantly being uh, recovered. For me, more important is sometimes to show simply these images that you see here. The building, of course, is a contemporary building. It's made of white concrete and red cotton, but nevertheless is, uh, and we expect it is perceived like that, always establishing this conversation with the old winds that you visit in this uh, amazing archaeological place and with the new architecture that is not referring to the Arab architecture literally never as you see but is constantly referring to how these spaces were conceived or more than that how these spaces are perceived nowadays now that there are ruins that are not anymore buildings uh, finished as they were. The roof became an important part. The roof is a complete like a, like a carpet like a land of uh, intervention made of uh, sorry, steel, uh, red steel, red cotton steel, that in the distance uh, simply tries to blend with the, the landscape of uh, the southern part of Andalusia. An important building for us that was very connected to this question of how an idea that becomes also a, a thought, an image, is uh, the light motif of the whole process. If we were working like archaeologists, what we find below should be only one material that is finished, something concrete. If the city originally was white, we used white concrete. 
Uh, if the red was used in the city, we use red uh, quantum steel. Everything is a consequence of this idea uh, that originated the project. From this one, I'd like to go to another one in which the landscape also becomes uh, a theme in the way we approach the project. Another museum, another museum in Spain, in a completely different in part of Spain. Uh, the northern Spain, which is green, which is rainy, nothing to do with Andalusia. Spain is a very, as you, many of you know, very uh, complex and, uh, country in, in which many different areas uh, have quite different even particularities, cultures or, or even languages. And this is the Basque country, uh, the north of Spain. Beautiful city of uh, San Sebastián. Uh, you see it here immediately in, in the place where the building has to be uh, had to be built uh, or even extended. It is in the very origin of this historical city where you have the mountain, Monte Urbul, that was uh, the old town that you see below. You see also the, the river here. You see the beach. You see the sea. You see the extension of the 20th century. Everything comes together in this very very dense uh, cultural part of the city. Our project is the extension of this museum that was a museum already visited since the 1930s, uh, which is an old common, the one you see here. This old common uh, became the Museo de San Telmo uh, and was, ha has been used since 80 years and uh, never had really uh, a proper adaptation. So the competition was asking to restore the whole building and to extend it almost double uh, the square meters than it had, which is what you see here behind. So for us, the project became, again, a question of what is the key question of this project. The key question, in our point of view, was this uh, element, uh, uh, which is a border between the natural landscape of the mountain behind and the urban landscape, the, uh, the artificial landscape of, of, the, of the city. In this edge, uh, we propose these walls that in our idea and proposal belong even more to the mountain and to the extension of the 16th century building. So they are, in, in, in a way, like inhabited walls, uh, where the new elements that a new museum needs always, uh, like uh, temporary exhibition spaces, auditorium, cafeteria, delivery areas, workshops, offices, etc., are uh, uh, organized. In this case, uh, the, the, the skin of the building is, again, much more than a decision of a material or, or another. It became the whole idea of this limit uh, that is expressing this condition between the artificial and the natural. So we decided to design this uh, facade to which we invited two artists from the Basque Country, Ferran and Uten. Together with them, we were walking around the area of the mountain. We saw in many cases what you see over there. Rocks near the sea that have been eroded by, by the water, by the wind, and that with the past of time, uh, uh, have these um, plants, moose and lichen and other plants that come from inside the rocks. So this became the, the, the idea of how to develop this limit that was more than a skin, it was a core dangling of the project, in which these panels are cast aluminum panels, so done one by one, uh, 60 centimeters uh, times 180, so you can organize them in different ways with a combinatorial idea, which is a thing that will come back and forth in, in my presentation because it's the way we understand very much architecture, which is a series of perforations, so four different types. In some of them, the green would come from the inside. So this idea became uh, the way of dealing with this sort of complex element that refers and sort of establishes a dialogue with the structure of the old bastions of the 18th century, with this historical building, with the stairs that go up to the mountain. <coughs> when you go closer to the building, maybe you perceive that the perforations were important, because they really somehow break down the scale of the building. Uh, perforations that sometimes have the green, sometimes allow the light to come in uh, and, and somehow develop the whole idea of the exterior. Inside the building is again a concrete building. It's white concrete in which this compression and expansion of the space are creating these gaps in between that have to do also with the proportions of the old city of San Sebastián. When you go there, you will see it in the, the barrio, the, the Parque Vieja de San Sebastián. For us again, similar to the previous project, 
restoring the historical building like we did and doing the new uh, parts of the project was always constantly this sort of conversation, this sort of never literal reference, but always uh, con consciousness of this uh, connection between the old and the new, which is uh, partly uh, the way we understand architecture, always like a balance between the memory of the past, of what, of what we interpret the past, and the invention of contemporary elements. The building became also, in a way, a, a sort of an art installation in the city. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the facade that you see here, in this actually impressive urban and complex urban place. Because if you look carefully, you see the sea, which is a beauty here. You see the mountain. You see the historical military part. You, you see the 16th century building. You see the new museum. You see the plaza that has become uh, quite a lively place in, in San Sebastián. Uh, since the building was open already five, six years ago, especially maybe in 2016 when the city was a uh, European capital, like Tallinn was once, I, I remember. Uh, so, in this case, the idea of this uh, in connection between the natural and artificial landscape was the key question. Uh, in the case of the Ioannino Museum that we won and we built in the, in the Austrian city of Graz, the question was different, uh, but it had to do also with how to deal with uh, the public space. I believe that uh, every time we do a project, in a way, we are asked to do something in a brief, in a competition, by a client, but we as architects need to give something else, which is not necessarily in the, in the, in the, in the, in the brief. In this case, it is this interesting part of the city, uh, a historical city, which is uh, also world heritage, uh, like the center of Tallinn, protected for many reasons, also for the rules, but also for the historical buildings. So in this part, uh, three institutions belong, uh, three buildings belong to the same institution. That is the Natural History Museum, there is the library, and there is the Art Museum. Uh, both these two of the 20th, uh, sorry, 19th century Beaux Arts buildings, this one of the 18th century. They were giving their backs to each other, they were not uh, connected, the competition was asking to connect them with the new spaces that are necessary, like it, ha it happened after, of course, after the Louvre in Paris and many museums. Uh, we were invited the competition and we were, in that case, uh, the only ones that didn't build anything new. We decided that everything had to be below Earth. Below Earth, like it happened in in the in the Cold War Museum, but with a special reason. First of all, because we thought the historical buildings were the protagonists. Uh, our extension should not be protagonists at all. But on the other hand, it had to uh, solve these questions that we were asked, and more than that, to define a new plaza that till now was closed and was private, that was given to the city. So this whole idea had to be and was developed with this uh, scheme in which uh, there's two floors and the ground, the whole archive and library is in the second floor, and a series of perforations are creating these interstitial spaces. The perforations with this idea of a combinatorial thinking are in a way all cuts of the same very large giant, you can imagine, uh, cone. This cone is cut in different pieces, and these pieces at the end create a sequence, and the sequence organizes the different areas that will be bring light and bring the light to these internal spaces below ground. At the end, uh, also the way of working with these glass elements became also an interesting element because it, it somehow transmitted this uh, reflection of the historical buildings that are above you, and nevertheless you perceive them when you are uh, below. So in this case, the idea was very much connected to this fact that a cultural building should also provide a public space to the city. Working with this idea, uh, that has become uh, a constant theme in our world, the idea that with few elements we can achieve the complexity that architecture always has and needs. So, uh, we have been working in different occasions uh, also very directly with geometrical patterns. Geometry is in the very origin of architecture constantly. Uh, but geometry taken to the extreme can be a pure combinatorial game. 
so that when <coughs> few elements are put together, and we learned that definitely by working so many years uh, with the archaeologists in the city of Cordoba, working in this museum that we did before in Medina Zara. Uh, in this case, we were invited uh, years afterwards to this competition in the same city of Cordoba, uh, the Arab city. Not the Arab city anymore, but the Arab city for centuries. We are over there, very close to the most important, this is my opinion, personal building, historical building in Spain, which is the Mezquita, the Mosque of Cordoba. We, are, we were going to do our project in the place you see here in yellow, very close to a very large building that was worn by OMA, Patron Pujas, just two years before, in a competition that uh, was asked to be done here. All the, all the participants, of course, did the project here, except Patron Pujas who did it here, and he won. So as a consequence of that, this was empty. So then the year after, there was a second competition to which we were invited. And we won it, and we built it, but because of the crisis, the friend who has it not built. So in any case, this story happens sometimes. But I explain it because it was also linked to the fact that the roof for us was important because it was going to be seen from the very large building that OMA was proposing. But for us, the most important thing it was not only the program. Before the, the key question for us is that we were working in Cordoba. Cordoba was this uh, cultural um, um, melting point for centuries in which the European culture and the, and the Islamic culture came together in the moment where the Islamic culture uh, was at its, uh, at its most important times. Like it happened later also, you know, in Alhambra, in Granada, and other um, great persecutions. The most of Cordoba is, uh, for me, uh, quite interesting because it refers to these ideas that I am mentioning today. It refers uh, to this idea of a combinatorial system. The project was done, the first building was done in the 8th century. It was the first mosque. It was extended, sorry, it was extended several times. I mean, every new king was extending it because the rule was there. It is all done with this double arch that you see here. The double arch is repeated, repeated in an infinite way. Besides, there was this all um, uh, ornamental element of the Arab world that you all know if you have in Spain or in North Africa, Marrakech, and so many places. They look complex, but as, as far as you spend a couple of minutes, you see that they are not complex at all. I mean, there are variations of very simple elements again. So with these two ideas, we started the competition in our office really thinking how could we relate to this, um, even details like Mukarnas, as they are called, yeah. small elements that you see on the left, uh, in this case is from Alhambra, in which very simple, not so simple, but very small elements are connected. So our project became uh, a sort of an idea of changing the scale, uh, inhabiting one of these little geometric pieces. Uh, in other words, the project is a purely geometrical game. An hexagon is divided in three hexagons of 150 meters, 90 meters, 60 meters, so three exhibition rooms. And of course, with this idea of making symmetries, rotations, etc., etc., we achieve a sequence of spaces that define a non hierarchical space, a, a continuous exhibition element that can be used in different ways. Or in other words, if you see the plan uh, of the project, uh, the project is organized into the, the southern part that you see below, which is uh, studios for artists in residence, the upper part, which is a common area uh, of this art center, the intermediate one, which is the one that is used by both sides, can be used by the artists, by the students, by the participants, can be a very large exhibition room of 1,000 square meters, or can be uh, several different uh, exhibition spaces of different ways. In other words, this idea that geometry provides with a very simple organization to the whole idea of a project. The brain is probably better understood in section. The whole building becomes a sort of a factory uh, in the sense that it's done with a single material which is concrete again. And uh, one has to think that this is not a museum, it's not for painting or photography, it is for video art, digital art, installations, production of art, uh, and in that sense a lively uh, place that it is in constant change. In other words, for us, uh, a container, a container to which the artist will respond 
whether they like it or not. If they don't like it, they will respond denying it. Or if, or if they like it, they will use it as it happening actually in nowadays that the center is, is open. So um, these are models. We work very much with models, as you can imagine, models of the building uh, in, in development that constantly for us come back and forth with the original image that is also a thought, uh, as I mentioned, uh, that was in the beginning of, of the project. The model of the competition is when you see later on, uh, after winning the competition, we asked uh, and we got in contact with uh, a team from Berlin, Realities United, that, that had done this uh, video, not video actually, art uh, uh, dynamic facade, for example, in the concerts and grass. Since we were connected to grass when we were working, we knew about these elements that are not at all uh, a, a typical video facade that you see in a football game but rather an intervention in the facade, in the architectural facade, that can be used in that way. I will come back to, to it later. The building was built relatively quick, quickly. The whole exterior is a uh, white GRC, glass reinforced concrete system, whereas the whole interior is a more rough uh, concrete uh, material. Uh, when you go in, uh, well, outside, so you see the two different phases of the project, uh, to the river, back uh, studios. When you are wearing, you see that the whole system becomes these inverted pyramids that are skylights that come down to these walls. These walls are always double walls. So you see perforations, holes. In between there is a gallery so that uh, in each of these holes you can connect beamers, sound, uh, elements, uh, whatever is, is needed. But more than that, you see that every space is connected to another one. There is uh, sliding doors that can close or open these spaces. In other words, they establish this sort of type of special conception that we were so impressed by looking to uh, the mosque of Cordoba and this combinatorial idea of the project. The building is now in use finally because what happened is that uh, because of the Spanish economic crisis, there were some years where the building was finished. There was not yet, uh, and there was a, a future use, but there were not uh, economical means to start it. Nowadays, the building is already in use. It is in this very predominant situation of, in front of, of the river, in front of the water. The facade therefore becomes an important part because it's seen from the other side of the river, it's perceived in the distance. The roofs are always important for us. You, you, we know that uh, modern architecture denied the roof and decided the Colosseum is the bathhouse that the only roof possible was flat. Uh, we really learn by working in several years in different places that the roofs can be the origin of the project. Actually one can say that the roof plan here is the origin of the whole project because it brings the light down, it defines the section and therefore it defines the space. Uh, actually the building now uh, in use is a um, sort of um, container in which uh, everything can happen. There are workshops, there are classes, there are uh, events, there are dance, uh, there are theater installations, there are contemporary art installations. And, and they are, of, of course, performances. It is very much, uh, not so much uh, as, uh, as it was thought at the beginning, um, a very international uh, exhibition center, which happens once or twice a year, a year nevertheless, but it's a living space for the young artists of, of, of the city of, of Cordoba. The exterior facade, the, it became a whole development itself. Uh, this ERC uh, uh, panels are also divided, as you see, in a geometrical pattern that is coming again from the structure of the building that you see from above. Each of these elements are actually uh, bowls uh, that have an LED lamp, uh, or a series of LED lamps in the lateral part of the building, so that uh, at the end what we get is uh, almost 1,500 pixels. These pixels actually are these balls, and these balls have different dimensions. So uh, they are really also expressing the, the scale of the building that you perceive only in the distance. Actually, the video that I have here can help uh, a little bit more to understand uh, how it is working. 
it was done together with uh, this team from Berlin, Real Madrid United. This building that was very important for us in that sense because it, 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 it connects many of these questions that were in our interest for several years. The, the geometry, the simplicity of a uh, few geometrical laws that are combined in a combinatorial way, but also the structure made of concrete, also the light and how it comes back, and of course the roof. Uh, I'm going to another project that was done uh, during that time. I mean, I'm talking about, this, as you see, uh, mostly our projects that were done in the last, uh, from 2005, 2000, 2010 in Spain, more or less, uh, when the crisis came, as you know. Uh, this is a history museum in Lugo. Actually, it's called History Museum. I'm going to show it basically in, in a short video. Uh, because uh, it's called History Museum, but it's not really a museum. Uh, we would say it's a, a visitor center to this city of Spain, which is Lugo, which is in the northern part of Spain, in Galicia. Also the green Spain, not, not, the, not the sunny one of the south. A place that has the, one of the most important uh, Roman walls in Spain that you see on the right, but also a place that used to be uh, the one that we were teaming for the competition, an industrial area not such beautiful as the one you see here, which is one of the famous paint, uh, photographs by Bishop. But it had all the similar elements that were demolished some, some time before. So our project became uh, this idea of uh, combining and defining again one single element, in this case a cylinder. The cylinder that was close to this connection to the history of Lugo, but also to the um, industrial past. What you see here, and you see it with the sound of our part, which is going to come later. Uh, what you see here is this uh, short video about the building, uh, simply because it explains, again, one important idea for us, that uh, we were asked to do this museum or, or visitor center, but what we were given, and that was the main plan, is, is more than that. It is a park for the city. Actually, in the conclusion, we were the only ones that proposed it should be a park and in the middle of this green park that is open to the city happen to appear these elements that refer, at least in a very personal way, to this industrial past of the city of Lugo. So at the end we are talking about sort of positive and negative cylinders, some of them below Earth, you see that we were very often below Earth, and some of them above Earth. <laughs> and made of one single material, and it says a Corten steel again. Yeah? In this case, the Corten steel is made of this uh, stretch uh, metal that, uh, that sometimes allows to, to perceive it with this uh, transparency, with the structure of, uh, of the building uh, is seen from behind. In some other cases, it's, uh, it's an opaque element. The building is uh, uh, accessed by this ramp that slowly goes down, uh, that has some exhibition spaces illuminated again by this hanging element from above. As I said, it's not a museum that shows original materials. It's about video installations, temporary installations, 
a way of sort of welcoming new people to the city and explaining what is the history of the city and what they should see actually when they visit the city afterwards. The connection that you see in many of our buildings to the sky and the way a patio, a courtyard can be also a framing of the sky, which is so different than we have done it in so many cases also in the Alpha Center in which uh, the skies are so different when, when you perceive it in so different countries and places and moments of the time. Actually, Galicia is a rather um, rainy place. Eh? The video was on a nice day, <laughs> but like today here. Yeah. <laughs> but again, you see, and that's the reason I show a, a video that is done, of course, with drums, like out nowadays is so common, eh, because the roof becomes again, the structure of the project. The way the move is perceived is also the way the project is developed and, and conceived. Well, I will continue while well, the project at the end, and this is something I show in different moments, is constantly referring to our memories of the place. This is always uh, the personal part of architecture. I, I like to refer as it, to it very often with an idea that I, that I in that case, I, I borrow from George Steiner, the idea of the window and the mirror. The window is a frame by which you would recognize the objective world, we react to objective situations. And the mirror is the opposite. The mirror is looking into ourselves. And the mirror is our own memories, our own interpretation of ourselves. But for us, in this case, was linked to the memory of this industrial part, or the, of the ruins, or of the walls of the Roman, Roman times, or in the case of the Madinata Tara project, this was about working like an archaeologist. Et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to go now to another project that is connected also to this theme of how we interpret. Uh, in this case, a very different case because it's, it's a cultural building because it's going to be exhibitions, museum. There is a private company that did this competition, uh, a, a company that you probably know because it's Mont Blanc, the one of the famous uh, writing uh, pieces. And here we are in a completely different situation. We were invited to this competition in Germany, in Hamburg. We have the office in Berlin, as I told you. We have the office in Madrid, the office in Berlin. Uh, my own life, our own life is uh, half and half. Because we are from Madrid, we spend more time in Madrid. But from the time of, boy, uh, of, of, the, of the projects themselves, uh, I'm constantly dealing with these two situations, which is also a very interesting part of our career, I would say. I'm a professor in Berlin, but Santa is a professor in Madrid. So this situation is interesting because in this case we had a, a project that we, by the way, we thought that Mont Blanc was Swiss or French, but Mont Blanc is German. Yeah, it's something that <laughs> we'll never say. But uh, it's true because this company was founded in Hamburg and it was uh, more than 100 years the origin of this uh, impressive, beautiful, precise writing uh, elements in the, the pens that were called before Rouge and Noir or Simplo and later on Mont Blanc. And then Mont Blanc organized this competition, they uh, divided five offices from different parts of the world to the new museum, the new visitor center, this uh, building that becomes the image of the, of the company uh, to the exterior. Uh, how to approach that again for us uh, was a key question. Uh, on one hand, we had to refer, or we wanted to refer, or we were asked to refer to the identity of the company. Well, the identity of the company uh, for us was linked clearly to these two images. One is the, the, the objects themselves, the, the beauty of the elements. The other is the name, Mont Blanc, this is impressive, massive in, in, the, in the Alps, the highest mountain in Europe, etc. So, uh, on the other hand, we had to respond to a very pragmatic question. This is the factory in Altona, in Northwest part of um, Hamburg. And this uh, factory, done in the 70s and 80s, uh, had a free area, which is the parking that you see below, and we were given complete, complete freedom of how to approach this project. 
So uh, you see the image of the area, the, the company factory, and the area of the competition. Our response <coughs> had to do also with a very sort of um, connected uh, idea to the factory itself. If we had to build a new building, it should not be only a fancy new, new building here or there, it could be also the new image of the factory itself. So uh, we propose actually to establish a new building which is a bar, this sort of long element. This long element, which would have an empty space in, in front of it, uh, was going to be also, and this is part of the whole personal interpretation, a, a sort of a, like a case. Where when you buy a pen, you get a case. You get a black case, you open it, and inside you find your, uh, your, your beautiful pen. So this is very simple, but on the other hand, it could become a whole architectural idea, if we really think of it. And this is what we started to do, the idea of, a, of this sort of black box, which is completely opaque, which is completely black because it's also the image of the company. Like when you buy a pen, you find this beautiful object inside. And if you have the time and want to open it, then you still find more and more uh, defined, precise, beautiful, complex elements uh, that are part of this uh, great engineering and, and, and handcraft of, of, this, of this company. So with this idea, our break became also a sort of analogy. Our building was going to be a 100 meter long building uh, that is black and that you only access from below. But inside, you would have a section uh, uh, that would express very uh, rational plans for the exhibition areas, for the academy, for the restaurant, for the shop, etc., etc., but with a complexity mm -hmm. in the compression, expansion of the spaces inside, which is uh, the sort of analogy to the, the complexity that you find in this otherwise simple and beautiful and elegant writing object. So when you see the section of this box that is 15 by 15 by 15 and 100 meter long, you see uh, again these situations of in-between spaces, this dome space that is hanging from above and creates this singular space that the, that the client wanted in order to present the, the image of the company itself. Well, the project uh, was won and we are now in, in the process of planning. The whole planning process is uh, already advanced. And we are actually dealing with the poor, these are images of the, still the competition, but the whole children, for example, of this facade, that becomes also a challenge for us. Because these facades are, again, and this is not only a matter of which one do we do this time or not, they are always linked to this image, which is a thought uh, behind. So it should be black, definitely. But it should be also something that could represent something very, very interesting for us and for the company, which is the writing culture. The idea that you write with your hand. They really, of course, are very proud of that, which is something that is getting loose more and more because of the use of the computers and so on. But writing with the hand is also linked to the ink, is also linked, is also linked to the mountain behind, of course. We try to uh, a reference. So the building is going to be done in white, in, uh, sorry, black concrete. It has to be really, really black concrete. It has several layers of uh, uh, texture. This texture can allow the building to be also um, used with uh, artificial light or, of course, with projections from behind, etc. So the building is in uh, this process already advanced. And this is a mock-up that uh, is in the, uh, in the company, testing the materials, some of them on the right is concrete, very beautifully done, like sort of, um, in this case, uh, German concrete, so very precise, but not completely black. <laughs> on the left, uh, this is uh, another company which is doing it carbon fiber, carbon fiber uh, concrete that achieves the black uh, perfectly, but maybe not exactly the quality. So we are in the whole, <laughs> we are in the whole process. That is, uh, actually, it could be for another lecture to explain the differences of working uh, in Spanish culture or in German, and I could add, of course, the Estonian. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, it's an interesting process in which uh, we are still planning, in the middle of the planning, but the mock-up is already done. Yeah? But more important for us, uh, and that's what refers to the whole idea of this presentation, is how I think we won the competition, because we were competing with very well-known and, uh, and good offices uh, because of this model. This model was exactly the size of a pen, and when you open it, you find uh, the complexity of our scheme that we have to do. 
So in, in this case, the project is, is a consequence of our own. Again, I insist very much on the protection of what is uh, uh, the, the identity of this company. It deals also with uh, some of the simplicity that we like to transfer to our buildings, though sometimes simplicity appears to be complex. Yeah? Uh, I'm going to talk about these other two projects that are important for us. This one is really very significant because the reason we are um, working now in Germany is by chance, it's simply because we won a competition. So maybe that means that in the future I believe in this one. No, don't worry. <laughs> the architects, don't worry, the architects. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm talking about Halle uh, because Halle is a, is a small town in Germany. But it's a very strong cultural city. In the last uh, 70 years, um, belonging to East Germany, to the DDR, so very depressed, and with few um, expectations nowadays, uh, still trying to recall. But they had a very interesting history. It was a historical city, a historical university city. They had a uh, very important building, <coughs> one of the most important in the city, which is the Moritz of the Kastel, or the, <coughs> the Schloss Moritz. Uh, it, it is a win. This is an image already of the 18th century because in the war of the 30 years, that you know well also because of history in Estonia, uh, it was destroyed uh, in this case by the Swedish and two of the wings. So for 300 years, the building was a ruin in two of its wings. Uh, actually, the building was called in German the Ruine when we went there and we were invited to the competition, selected to the competition. So we had the feeling that this win still should be kept somehow. We couldn't simply do something new only, but the win should be there. That was the one you see here. On the other hand, we were very impressed by the rules that also are very common in the old town in Northern Europe, but in Southern Europe not so much. These very steep rules, these very implemented rules that you have, for example, uh, and they have, for example, in the beautiful um, Marienkirche <coughs> the, in the center of the town that was impressively painted, and you see on the right, by Feininger. And Feininger was living in the Moritz world and had a, an atelier, a workshop in the existing castle in the 1930s. And Feininger did the, all these famous Halle paintings uh, in the 1930s that are part of most important part of the collection of this uh, museum that is in the moment. So, so all these questions came together in our, in our mind. You know, it should be a win, the roofs are important, we have to extend it, finding her and it is, 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 is expressing and was living there so strongly the idea. The consequence was that we won the competition with this model, exactly, uh, a metal model saying that we only had to do a new roof. This new roof was going to hang on top of the wing, the two wings that were uh, empty for 300 years. And a new tower would appear also in the, in the place where one disappeared also in, in the time. And from this roof, they were going to hang some boxes, and these boxes that you see here built, uh, were going to include all these new extended spaces that were needed for the part of the, the museum. So the museum itself became for us uh, also the effort of achieving this complexity out of these few elements, something that should appear uh, like a floating element that constantly refers to this in-between spaces between the old and the new, again a sort of conversation that permanently for us is, is a theme. Some case, in some cases uh, we were talking about new areas and the hanging boxes. When you see the building from the outside, uh, we, we really wanted to express this light structure above, made of steel and aluminum, that blends with the usually grey uh, skies of Halle. And uh, below, nevertheless, we have the strong, uh, massive uh, presence of the, of, the, of the walls. So that for us, the roofs, as you see here, uh, you see here, very well built with this German quality, became uh, this is, of course, with our office only, uh, where it became, like in many cases, a very important part of the architecture and in a way of interpreting it from this more public side of the uh, architecture. Project, yeah? and the reason the images of this project maybe are perceived much better when one is in the distance or in another building like here, 
uh, and looks towards a, a simple model that we thought one day we built uh, and then uh, uh, became uh, built as you see here. That constantly, um, because it's made of this aluminum, refers to the climate conditions of, of the city. But more important again, uh, the connection to the origin of this personal, this again only a personal reference uh, to find again for this geometrical uh, elements that uh, decompose the existing reality. Well, um, before we go to the Albuquerque Center, this is a, a last project that we was just won very recently, some few months ago. In, in this case, a very, very interesting program, a very, very interesting theme. It's the archive of the avant-garde. Only the name is already promising. Yeah? It is uh, it is an impressive archive that is uh, done by this uh, collector, with this Marzona. It is Marzona is a German Italian collector that, for instance, he was twenty years old, was collecting and collecting an impressive number of pieces that include, of course, uh, uh, paintings, books, posters, original writers, uh, writings of the, uh, of the avant-garde in, in, in music, in, uh, in architecture, in, in literature, uh, furniture elements of the 20th century. You go to his home and then there are the, the, the Duchamps, the Picasso, the, I mean, the collection is an amazing collection. A sort of a broad collection of everything that has to do with the avant-garde of the 20th century. Part of this collection is going to go to the, the painting one, uh, is going to go to the the new museum in Berlin, uh, the one that is going to be between uh, Mies and Sharon, that is one of the of Meron. But the main part of his collection is going to go to a new building in Dresden. That was the reason of this competition that we entered uh, and, uh, and we just won. And again, uh, very much connected with this uh, historical um, presence of the architecture of the past. Because Dresden is uh, quite a uh, and a historically important place in Germany. Uh, of course, very well known because of, the, because of the terrible bombings of the Second World War that destroyed almost everything, but it was rebuilt in many cases. Not all the buildings disappeared. Actually, we are talking about this part. This is a historical, you know, all the historical part. This is also the historical part of the Elbe. Uh, and in this uh, place, there was this building that was planned in the 18th century as a double entrance sort of guard building. Uh, only one of them was built and it, it was extended and modified in, during the, the centuries. As you see here, and images, and images before the war or uh, after the war. It is important to see it after the war because being a very important historical building in the city of Dresden, uh, the whole interior was completely destroyed, so there was nothing. Uh, actually, during the day, they are times the Soviet uh, in front stand, they, they, they did something inside, they were really inside. So the competition asked clearly to um, keep uh, with no modifications the exterior, but the interior was completely uh, free. So uh, what we did when we entered the competition is this very simple scheme. We wanted to have very open the, the ground floor. The ground floor again connects to the city and to the garden which is behind. And then a series of uh, simple galleries that you see here will include a hanging archive. And this was um, a challenge, and it's a challenge. Because the whole archive is the most heavy part of the building. And the building is floating. Uh, and it's floating uh, made of concrete again. And it's floating because uh, it has a, a pragmatic reason. Uh, you know that in, in probably you know that the, the Elbe in Germany goes up and down very often with big problems. So the idea of having the archives not in the front was accepted. <laughs> but on the other hand, for us, it was also a sort of, a, again, a metaphor of the presence of the history, the past, in contrast with the avant-garde, which expresses exactly the opposite of that. Yeah? So there was a very interesting challenge now between the exhibition that we are starting to plan together with them, which is going to be a constant change of exhibition, and moving, and free space, and nothing fixed, uh, as opposed to the uh, heavy, the presence of this box of three levels of many, many tons, I don't remember exactly now, uh, with uh, most part of the archive of the avant-garde. We are doing now the project and, and eventually I will show you 
to the future time. But uh, now I would like from this one of the image of the beautiful collection to the project that brought us here to, to Estonia. <laughs> Uh, and I would like to change here to having, as I did in some other cases, the beautiful piece of our part of Spiegel and Spiegel, uh, not only because it's like a, a great piece of our part, uh, not, you know, it also refers, in my point of view, to some of the ideas that we constantly were also interested when we talk about these variations of the same theme, or we talk about geometry, uh, or we talk about combinatorial thinking, we talk about the idea that a, a project is a mirror of an animal. Many of these associations come together with this, uh, not only theme, but also type of Spiegel and Spiegel. You know the place, because you know, for me it's an amazing place that when we saw it, in those in Cuestas, in, in La Blasba, uh, surrounded by the sea, in, in three of the paths, and with this impressive uh, forest. In this impressive forest, uh, the, the, the trees themselves, which is the first time we were so close to, to a project that we were developing, became a, a, an original part of the, of the idea. The trees that are so dense, but so vertical, uh, as, as you know, I'm not showing you things that, that you don't know. Besides, it was our part that you also knew well. Huh? And, uh, and, uh, and a person that we happened to know afterwards, but we only knew from his music. So uh, uh, in this case, it's also an interpretation of what we think it should be a, a, a project for a, for a foundation of a living master who uh, is so close, so we thought, so close, we like to think so close to some of the ideas we admire so much. Huh? So uh, the project became also with how the competition was uh, announced. And, and since uh, the competition was announced, and many of you maybe some remember, with a video. And this video had this sound of um, speaking and speaking. And uh, Angora <laughs> was talking, uh, the architect who was working together with us in this project, uh, talking, I remember, if they didn't know who we were, we were talking about the building should be here, and then there was a drone going up and down. Yeah. So it was so impressive, this uh, way of announcing a competition. It was also very impressive to, to see that the, the core of the idea was expressed with this um, uh, helicoid uh, drawing. Yeah. That became also the origin of how we interpret uh, this idea of a geometrical um, interpretation in architecture, of, in this case, the music of our part, who, who has this uh, extremely strong and beautiful sketches. The one you see here on the left is our geometrical origin of the project. Uh, a system of these pentagonal shapes that are scaled. Pentagonal shapes, uh, you have seen probably, uh, uh, we have been using in another project, it became a, a thing very extremely attractive for us as a geometry as well. It links in one sense to, to nature, and we know that in, in the flowers and the vegetables are constantly appear. It links also the music to the pentagram, to the scale of the project. So the project became a sequence of uh, cultures. The cultures are these empty spaces. They all come from the same geometrical pattern of the pentagon. They start to be connected in one way in another, in ways that, uh, and this belongs to an exhibition we did in Berlin some months ago, uh, about the project and the to uh, something that became a, an unexpected connection between the architectural notation and the musical notation. The cultures themselves are the empty spaces that create a, the idea of the Berlin as a post Berlin in the middle of the forest. Uh, the drawings of the, of the, of the, not the competition, because the competition had more poles, uh, of the final solution uh, appear in the middle of this uh, impressive forest. But the models that we were doing during the whole process in our office were also part of this feedback between what we understood should be the building, the client's desire, the, the, the conditions of the, of the actual site. Uh, and this model is expressed in my point of view well this idea of a project that is organized like with no beginning and no end, 
that should be in the middle of the forest, not explaining that if this is as a facade or not, nothing is a facade here, because everything belongs to the, to the, to the perimeter. The whole project is organized with this sort of um, uh, band-like structure in which the perimeter part is the one that is used basically for the foundation offices uh, and more in that sense relatively private elements, whereas the center is the one that is used for the public areas, always connected. This image is uh, belong to this exhibition in Berlin and this catalog that we did because by working uh, lately on that, when we decided to do this exhibition, it was a sort of an um, unexpected discovery to see that our technical drawings, these are technical drawings, they are simply explaining and even detailing how the, what we call the snake mode that use a unified good thing, the elements of the facade, uh, uh, anything started to establish a sort of unexpected uh, relation to, to the system is behind. The core of the building uh, is probably the auditorium that you see here that was developed uh, together with, uh, uh, with um, a very good friend, a uh, uh, Catalan uh, acoustical engineer, uh, his colleague is today here, which is in Arau, uh, because uh, the whole presence of the Acoustical elements had to become also an architectural element itself of the, uh, of the auditorium board, that's as you will see. <coughs> uh, there was two elements in the program that were somehow unexpected. Uh, one, a little chapel that Arabo Part and Nora Part wanted specifically to have there. The other one, a tower, that was the only one that apparently had no function but simply one very important function that we learn, which is to walk up so that you can see the sea above. So the building is organized in these areas that I'm going to explain in detail, but uh, you see it there that include archive, library, uh, public uh, vestibule, galleries, etc., etc., offices, and that simply are organized with this uh, pattern that uh, apparently are free forms, but actually they are a consequence of this geometry. It is also a personal way of understanding the way of Parat, but maybe because we are architects, when I listen to the work of Parat, I see geometry. It's a way of understanding it that can be many, like in any uh, great work of art. In this case, again, the sections show here that the roof is important for us. The roof was not simply a flat or simply an <coughs> inclinated roof. Actually, the roof is also uh, folding slightly in order to adapt also to the necessities of the space below. For example, you see here, the auditorium needs a bigger space, the offices need a lower space, and then there's a sort of a gentle slope uh, going up and down. The roof that you see here in one of our many models uh, uh, is therefore, and this is not new for you now, as, uh, after listening this lecture, is an important part in our architecture constantly. Yeah. Actually, when we when we did the uh, exhibition in, the, in in Berlin, this was in the Galleria Aedes uh, in December, I think. Um, the project was presented, as you see here, uh, as a uh, as a sequence of several conceptual elements. The empty voids of the courtyards that you see in the geometrical pentagons at the center, the chapel that you see in the left, the tower that is behind, the roof, the landscape. Actually, uh, uh, the whole presentation of this uh, exhibition in Berlin in Forum, was a full experience for us. By doing the catalog and understanding better what we were doing, but also by looking to in the installation uh, how that was within. Uh, with the musical piece of, of Tabula Silentium, the farm apart, how also the people reacted, no? And I like also the, the images uh, that were um, taken by, by this attraction that every of us has for the moment. There's something, maybe because we all were children and we like to play with moments and little things. No? Actually also, uh, like uh, there was this photo from somebody, no? Somebody was taking this photo six months ago, no? Uh, it was not prepared, I saw it in, in, the, in the web actually, this photo, 
of the uh, this gallery, you know? but for me it was important to see this process, don't which is the one that is about to finish. How, how from the idea, from the very more even personal, poetic and geometrical, etc. ideas, from the functional question, from the technical uh, problems and, and development, the project goes ahead in, into, into what is almost about to be now today. Yeah? It is uh, interesting, important to mention uh, that to work with uh, the Parat family was been, has been a, 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 an, an absolutely uh, not uh, special occasion. I mean, not, not very often a, a, an architect can work with a living artist and with uh, uh, not only himself, but with, with Nora, his wife, who has been so directly involved with Michael, with Anu, with everything. But in this case, also for us, it's always it was always important when we were with uh, our wall in the place to to see what he thinks, <laughs> which is not so. And in this case, uh, you see on the right the, when we did the, the drawing of the, of the of the building and the landscape. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, we think these photos are later, but but that day. Uh, Actually, he started to think that the building was not exactly in the right place. Mm -hmm. we, we became aware after a long time talking to him. So we went to the office, we started to try to move it, as you see here, you know, uh, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, apparently very easy. <laughs> it's actually it's very easy in the plan, but uh, it's full of, full of, full of uh, absolutely consequences afterwards, you know? and which is also very interesting when talking about the relation between music, music and architecture. It is about notation, it's about many things that relate, but there is something different in the way you uh, interpret music or you interpret architecture. Interpreting architecture means building it. Uh, and there is later and another interpretation is how you perceive the building. But when you build it, touch it. It will make a problem because Arbopart uh, used to say that he likes tolas. I always like also to our work is never finished, I continuously, I continually, they say, we say, yes, but when, once it's finished, <laughs> we can not anymore sense it. But these things are important because uh, belong also to the whole history of how the building was developed. This happens in every project, of course, but in, in this case, uh, it was special for many reasons. When the building started, this is a, 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 a drone again. <laughs> Uh, the drone had some uh, influence in this project uh, because of the competition at the beginning, but also in the moment that it was also tested, uh, this future tower that would allow our part, the family and everybody to look and see the sea. Uh, the project started, construction, and as you know, has been a quick um, and I would say successful process we, because uh, we have been involved in so many projects that took many years. There was the opening, um, uh, the first, uh, first uh, round, uh, round stone yeah, uh, ceremony. The whole construction process uh, in different moments of the year, as you can imagine, this was again one of the, the, of the days of a beautiful day, but, <laughs> but there were others. Uh, and actually these others were extremely beautiful, I have to say, because because these images are really um, explaining something that is very common for you, not for us in Spain, though it snows in the mountains. But, uh, but, but, uh, and uh, also, when I saw these images that they show me of the building um, seen from above, the snow gives another level of presence to the building uh, that, uh, that will happen in, in several moments of the year here. Uh, the building is now, as you can imagine, almost finished. It appears in the landscape as we would imagine, uh, as, as you see here. Uh, in the distance, it's the, the roof again, uh, the, the one that establishes the first visual contact. Uh, when you walk closer, you see that the trees became the origin of a system, again, which is a combinatorial system, a series of uh, groups of elements that are structural or for the water or simply very thin vertical elements that create this sort of, again, I use the word, conversation or dialogue between the trees or the forest. And this perimeter that voluntarily, that was the idea from the very beginning, it shouldn't be a hard end of a building. It should, if possible, try to blend 
the, 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 between the, the forest, the landscape, the trees, and the actual elements that conform the building. The materials that are used, as you see, are few, basically the sink, the whole roof, the metal columns, and the wood, and the glass. And these elements are constantly repeated in one place or, or another. They are appearing in different ways. When you go inside the building, the building it connects this uh, uh, interior gorgeous uh, with the exterior landscape of the trees. And this was and is the key part of the presence of this sequence of geometrical uh, pentagonal spaces. Now the building is in the whole process of where I'm going tomorrow. It's, I'm going tomorrow because I haven't been, have been in some weeks. I have seen the last photos of furniture installation of the exhibition. The part is already there, as you see here, in the entrance to the uh, auditorium. The auditorium, as I mentioned, is is uh, probably the, the core of the building. But you see here is also the acoustical ceiling designed with Arau uh, from Barcelona. And, and the whole building is, uh, the whole space is done in, in wood. Uh, an important element is, uh, is not only the ceiling that is defined by these diffusers that try to make the, the sound uh, work in a way like if it was a big volume. It is important for us uh, the presence of the landscape again, a very large opening that can be closed when necessary uh, for certain activities. It connects directly the auditorium uh, with the exterior of the landscape. <coughs> Another part of the building, which is a significant one, is the chapel. The chapel was always the element that uh, somehow um, uh, had to come together in this idea. Uh, because the chapel had some conditions. Uh, because of the uh, Argo part and the part, wanted it to be uh, closely related to an Orthodox chapel. Uh, like the ones that are in Greece and so on. So our, our design was this very small building, but in our idea uh, appears here as if it was there before. Uh, as if the building had to be built surrounding the existing chapel, made of this uh, simple uh, concrete outside, taking the themes of, of the Orthodox chapel, whereas the inside that you see here empty will be covered with images that are uh, directly uh, uh, sort of uh, directed by the wishes of our department. Actually, what you see on the right is some stones, the stones of these courtyards. The courtyards will have, and I think they have already planted it, more walls coming, uh, like in the perimeter of the court, the one that was there before. But the stones were somehow selected from one day that I remember to go together with the part family and, and showing us the, the, the beauty of these pieces that were taken uh, from the sea nearby. The courtyards and the patios that in these images may look like strange geometrical figures are a consequence, as you know now, of simply uh, combining these pentagonal shapes. Again, like in some of our plays, how you see the sky becomes a, a thing that we are particularly interested in. It's like if we tested it in every play we do, one way or another, with skies that are always the same but always different. And of course, when you see it from above, the building, uh, in a way, it makes understandable these elements that when you are inside, probably you understand why they are close and they are in the second. When you go up the tower, you have the possibility of seeing the roof. The roof during the night also transmits the light of this connection to the Actually, during the night, which in your country means in many months, many times of the year, the building appears in a different way. And it takes this image that is also very connected to the forest, not the light that is coming from inside of this strange building that appears in, in, the, in the forest. Of 
course, the other part is the tower. The tower that always mm, it was intriguing for us, but became a key part of the project. It was a tower and, uh, you know, that had this beautiful and simple function to go up and, and to look towards the sea. But on the other hand, uh, it was also a tower that could not be a, a very, it would have a presence because it's very high, but had to relate to the trees nearby. So they were constantly thought that it had to be like these trees that are almost, in, 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 when you go up, you know, somehow transparent and somehow uh, not massive. You know. Of course, uh, also the drawings of Arubat and this connection uh, that the music of Arubat has, uh, which is so deeply personal in my point of view, and so so that the, the, the text, uh, in many cases, uh, religious text, uh, become some of the origin of our interpretation in terms of musical questions, harmony uh, with them, sound, that are expressed in some drawings of our band, uh, so beautifully as you see here. Became also a sort of a personal reference of how to develop with this helicopter that was in the sketch of the competition at the beginning, and with a very architectural, uh, say, Fibonacci series sequence. Uh, this idea that the whole music uh, that we are listening in my point of view, but also the sketches uh, themselves of the competition were talking. So the drawings of our part became somehow analyzed in our own particular way. And they were drawn and they were transformed into a geometrical pattern. This is what if you take the tower, you see the pentagon above on the left, and the tower becomes a sort of helicoid, <coughs> which is at the end built as a pure engineering uh, tower, which is what it is, with, with, with the engineers from Estonia that were working so good with us, Andres in this case, again. Uh, the engineer could develop the, the whole structure of the tower in this steel elements. So that at the end, this piece that became so uh, strange uh, when we received the competition brief and suddenly during the whole process became more and more important that we presented in this rendering when we won the competition with our part walking with a strange animal, as he said, nearby. <laughs> Uh, was the motive of doing this tower where now uh, Arbo Park and everybody can go up, will come up and look towards the sea. So thank you very much. Um, as you showed, all the all your projects are very. They have very strong concept, and they are very well connected to the identity of the client and to the culture of the location. I'm curious. Maybe you could tell me with a few words how does your working process look like for finding these concepts? How do you go from zero to one very strong concept that you propose? Is it like? you find the important thing immediately and then you just keep refining it or, or you or, or you find many ideas and you keep discarding them or is it, what, what is the difficult part for you? I think the answer is not easy because, uh, because there is no answer. <laughs> the answer is uh, that uh, in, any, in every case the situation has been different. I can tell you um, projects that, uh, first of all I have to say that everybody, everything depends very much on our own background, experience of nowadays for many years, they're interested in many questions that are not only architectural, and this uh, at the end 
creates a personal biography. But said that, when you do a, when we enter a competition, it's, uh, we are confronted with a new situation, and they say, what is this about? Of course, we, uh, we tried to go to the place, but for example, in Estonia, we didn't come. We had to, we came after winning, so we had to interpret it from, from what we saw, from what we knew, from, in this case, we had in mind Finland that we uh, knew very well, but then it was not the same, but in any case, it's another story. What I mean is sometimes we go to the place, and the place immediately gives us the clue. Uh, sometimes it's not like this. Sometimes uh, the project take, takes time and time, and nothing comes out, and, and, and eventually uh, it happens in, in, a, in, a, in a moment. Uh, I could tell you a project that came immediately, for example, <coughs> I believe that sometimes the, the ideas, uh, the projects are in our mind even before we know it. Uh, in the case of the Medina Zahara, the archaeological museum, the first one I saw, I showed today, I remember that we we got to the idea in, in two days. We said, this is it. We have to do it like an archaeological background. We will find the building below. We will work like an archaeologist. We do agree. We find it. It's made of concrete. Everything was immediately coming because the idea in a way, I remember uh, we saw it before when we went uh, to archaeological sites. In this case, they not so so they showed the beginning, but they went to an archaeological site in Syria that we visited with my students or mother many years ago. I remember being there and saying, well, what, what a beautiful architectural idea. And then 10 years later, the idea was there. Uh, so I, I cannot answer because uh, the, there are many, in some cases, the images are a consequence of, of, of uh, dialogue with other people. For example, in the case of the San Telmo Museum in San Sebastián, where the community is coming, working with the artist, possibly saying that this has to be the screen. You know, everything is a different moment and a different question. I think it's only a matter of the, the, the time, the memory, the experience. Thanks. Thank you very much. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned combinatorial thinking. Combinatorial thinking, right? So uh, I pretend I don't know what it is. Could you just elaborate what is your meaning or, and how it is related to the sense of humor? Sense of humor? Yeah. This is not bad. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> the first one is uh, it's easier to answer. The first one uh, is easier to answer what we understand. Of course, if somebody is a mathematician here, I would not talk about combinatorial thinking because. It might be, uh, it is probably a com quite complex and different thing. For us, it is more an attitude towards complexity. I, uh, our world is complex, and therefore architecture, it is complex, it's not easy. And if it's very easy, then probably it's lacking many other things. So, so but we always thought how to be somehow, um, have a sort of a conceptual economy. I'm not talking about the economy of money, uh, economy of concepts. And working with this um, uh, archaeological, archaeological site in, in, the, in the Arab city of Spain, we, we learned very much about these patterns of the Arab world. We saw beautiful spaces that I mentioned there before that were done with three or four geometrical parts and repeating and repeating and repeating. We started to think of all, I mean, there's nothing new, everybody knows, uh, all, the, uh, all the words we say and then um, with uh, concepts, sentences, words that at the end are expressed only with 25 to the same, uh, or the music, you can uh, talk, talk about 12 tones if you like, or the colors of the three colors, so etc. Et so in, in some moment, geometry and architecture became um, a way of combining few elements and achieving uh, complexity. If this is humor or not, uh, might be, <laughs> might be, but I don't know, this is a, a personal idea of looking at it. Why do you mean humor? Uh, I, I believe that thinking is a complex process also, you know, so, so yeah. uh, in this, in the, the personal things uh, sometimes matter much more than, you know, all these methods and yeah. as I understand. Yeah. So, and all your uh, answer inspired me to another one, about one thing, I tried to think, how do you define uh, the level of depth? I mean, you combine different things, you analyze and depths, as I understand. So how do you define for yourself this level of depth? You can go forever, you know, for eternity in depth, as I understand. Your, your competence is so great. So I mean. I don't know. But uh, 
way the I understand that you're talking you're talking at depth of depth in a conceptual way or depth in a literal way of going more and more. Well, I mean the information is great, so you can go and very uh, because uh, depth is another quite thing quite a question in architecture. Uh, and I don't mean that necessarily if I'm talking about architectural concepts of depth. Uh, that necessarily it's only about depth, for example. In the, uh, there is a point that we try to, again, mention it today, as I explained it, that we were talking about, you remember an, an, a museum in Graz, which is cylinders, I mean, coals below or simply a circle. Uh, we thought that the whole idea is that the, the whole depth was in the surface. So surface can become the, the deepest part of the project in a conceptual way. Uh, and we thought that the ground floor, in this case, uh, when you walk, uh, when you, you, it's, uh, sometimes you don't pay so much attention. And it's exactly what defines the level where uh, we, we, we actually live. So this idea that surface can become very deep is something that uh, we also apply to the question of the, the wall in San Sebastian, in the, in the San Telmo, in the museum, where the whole tension between what we understand is artificial or natural is linked to a surface, you know, to a deep uh, space. No? So, I mean, uh, we can talk very, very long about that, because uh, sometimes the, the concept uh, deep or, or surface uh, is in the very origin of what's the key question. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question. Concerns the verb controls. Um, you were working uh, quite many years with a composer, Bob Obey, and um, I was struggling um, with this um, words about composition that we have in curriculum as well, composition. And I was uh, asking to the night, it's not so serious question, of course, but, uh, <coughs> but um, why these? Because if we're talking about the composition, then we are talking about music and poetry. And if we're talking about the architecture, and then we just start to use the designing or design. Um, do you see on this line, or how you, you yourself are positioning on this line between composing and designing? You're talking about composing music or composing uh, generally speaking? Yeah, because, generally, uh, I think generally, yes. Because I remember, it's true, when I was studying uh, in the School of Madrid, for many years, the uh, second year, there was this uh, matter which is called element of composition. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was trained like that, like many generations, the element of composition. It was a first part which was more theoretical, and it was and we referred always to the to France, 18th century, Duran, uh, all this uh, patterns, organization, how to come up, of course, going back to the to the Renaissance, etc. So composition uh, had some rules and had some elements. Then uh, later on in our career, and definitely in the States, and definitely later, the I mean, composition became an out of the uh, question. In fact, it was an old world, it was an old concept. Had not to do with what architecture should be. Uh, it's not about composition, it's not about facades or elements, it's about other concepts, <coughs> more social, spatial, etc., etc., that are not about composition. But later, but in the past of the years, I mean, ideas come back from the, on your origin, no? And for and for example, I don't, I don't, I don't, I probably think that this question about the combinatorial thinking uh, is also very much linked to being aware that uh, things are done uh, with elements, and elements are combined, mm -hmm. and whether you call it composition in the classical way or do it combinatorial in the way we like to call it. We're talking eventually about a similar question. Uh, and it's linked to this idea that definitely connects to, to music, connects to poetry. But you could have also a, a poet and a musician who would tell you I'm not caring about composition, I'm not caring about sound or about everything, but about also poetry. And caring and taking care of other things, not about the classical composition. So the problem is, is if you think composition refers to the classical, classical way of addressing it, probably 
I don't know if we are so interested. But if, if we refer to the concept that we understand is behind, I think it's there, whether we call it that way or not. It's a personal interpretation. Um, I first asked a simple question and then uh, maybe like a, a comment and uh, did you change the shape of the building when uh, Mr. Pat came to site and said maybe we should move the building and maybe that but just as a kind of quick remark of what I saw today there is this kind of at least from my point of view you as the architect using kind of like the eyedropper tool to pick up certain properties and then you in inject it onto a site and it kind of beautifully forms this uh, building. Uh, so you did this process in the, in the competition phase and then on site there's the decision that has been made, let's change the kind of orientation, let's kind of re-inject. And in, in this case, I'm just not even commenting as a critical thing, but rather to kind of learn from this experience what happens if you change the orientation of a very fixed geometry in, in the case of the our path center? Or was this a kind of, okay, let's just quickly change it and nothing's going to change? Or did something change in that process? It's a very interesting question because it refers to to what extent a, a, an idea of a project is already fixing everything from the very beginning. Definitely we don't think like that. We try in our project, uh, of course, the way I explained it today, it might look that like this should be always exactly as I thought, we thought and we decided to do. Uh, but actually what we are more interested in is precisely in ideas that establish a more um, open system. For example, if we talk about the Arbo Park Center, there were two themes that were, besides the tower, and besides uh, uh, some other elements that were important, the thing that uh, the moon has to be a continuous shape. Uh, the continuous shape um, can be exactly the one with it, or could be slightly different, and the project still would be the same, or slightly different, and uh, this is one part. And the other part is that there would be a porous building. There would be a sequence of perforations that have a, per a geometrical reason, personal. Uh, what a geometrical reason? If you look to the competition that I could show today, but, uh, because we're now we are at the end of the process, but in the competition we won with a very similar shape, the exterior one, but uh, many more courtyards, many more. Because it was an idea uh, uh, of keeping exactly all the trees, of doing a, a, a sort of a representation that was a bit taken to the limit. In the whole process of working with Michael Park and uh, Arno Park, etc., uh, it became clear that for many reasons also functional it wouldn't make sense to have 12 patches so they were reduced but that was not uh, it was not something that we went to, to the office saying oh, we lost the project idea not at all i mean the system was there they have to be a pentagon they can be a, organized in different shapes they can be moved so when you ask me what happened we, we had to move it also of course some things changes not in the exterior shape because it was yeah, kept but in the position of the patterns. But I meant it was difficult in that every drawing we do, there's many more drawings, and many, I mean, it's, it affects many questions, technical, structural, so it was slightly moved, but uh, the big movement was from the competition, sorry, from 14, I don't know how many uh, calls to the final ones. So an open system, uh, when the idea is linked to a shape or a form, uh, you, I mean, you are, you are limiting yourself, and you are limiting the process that is impossible to uh, uh, to to keep because you, you need really to adapt to many situations that you don't know when you do only a concept. But when you define uh, an idea that is simply establishing a rules, a set of rules, then you are very free. When we said uh, in the first project uh, that we were like archaeologists. Okay, the project is very similar to the first sketch, but change, but it could even change more. We, we, we said even if the project has to be extended, we simply dig and find new projects. So there's an idea behind uh, If you say that your idea is that you build a perfect cylinder and only one, and you, you, uh, there is a problem, then you will spoil the project. So that's a, 
a good point because we thought very much about it. very long and experienced career in architecture and uh, going through different places uh, I guess you have improved, you've learned. Could you name one thing that uh, you've learned from working uh, with the Estonian architects and what has been something that has been an impact to me and also have for the future after being in Estonia? I think already, I already mentioned several because I would start definitely, first of all, with this connection with the landscape that is, uh, that was and has been during the whole process present in a, if you, if I should say it's not only in a, a purely abstract way, it, it was also in the way we perceived this landscape when we came. For example, I remember like, uh, I remember things that connect to the previous question, like designing a path that was connecting the parking to the building and designing it in the, with drawings, with computers, with models, with a beautiful shape that we like very much. But we can hear and with Michael one day, uh, we realized that uh, simply walking by the, by the landscape, by the forest, it didn't make sense of that. So we adapted to the place. Learning from the landscape is one thing we will remember and we learn definitely. Of course, I cannot avoid to say many times working with uh, a, 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 an artist of like our part, because even if he, he, we didn't, I mean, he was very often uh, when we came, but he was not in the construction side, uh, taking decisions, of course. Uh, but it was always like having in mind this, how does it connect to that? And when we learn more and more about also his sort of way of uh, of working and or, 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 or listening more to his music or doing the exhibition in Berlin, etc. Et uh, does it make sense what we're doing? Uh, uh, there was a question I always like uh, when I think of architects, for example, like right, of, of we can such a great architect, uh, Estonian by the way. Everybody thinks American but born in Estonia. Uh, and, uh, and, and we can. Uh, the master he was, he always referred like when he did something, he admired so much the Corbusier, he said, uh, would the Corbusier like that? Would the Corbusier, what would the Corbusier think of that? <laughs> and I mean, I mean, it was for me a very shocking uh, thing coming from uh, Louis Kahn, no? uh, And so for us, uh, this connection to our part, definitely. But uh, if we talk about uh, the connection to the landscape, uh, uh, for us it's completely new. Maybe if we had uh, working in this situation, kind of like, in other, in other cases we have been. Uh, we have been working in most of our cases, except in the one I showed at the beginning, in cities, actually in historical um, complex context. And this is, if you like, the, 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 the element that repeated more in our career. So, besides the people in Estonia and the good weather. <laughs> Most of the projects that we have seen today, uh, besides uh, the, the one you know on Mont Blanc, I think I've, uh, I've seen that uh, you uh, embrace the, the history of the place with the geometry. But in these uh, Arab art centers, in, uh, the, the history is uh, substituted by, by nature or, or the forest. Uh, did, did you feel like a bit uh, going outside of your comfort zone? It's a very good question, because it's true that uh, there is something in our place, in most of the cases, when you, somebody asks me what is the beginning of the project, and uh, it then very often relates to what was here before, or what is there, and how we interpret it, and it's linked to past uh, layers of history in many cases. Uh, in, in nature there are also layers, and there is history in a you know, longer term. But in this case, uh, definitely there was nothing that we refer to a previous architectural or urban situation. 
So in a way, it was a little bit out of our comfort zone, I have to say. And if you see, it, it again, show um, the, all the building we are working and doing, but I would say this is a, a real exception in that sense. But on the other hand, we have an incredible counterpart, which is we're working for a living artist that we admire so much. So uh, one thing, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.